Cesare Borgia, pay homage to Juana d'Aragon, Queen of Castile. Your Royal Highness. Prince Cesare. How fine to finally meet you. My husband spoke of you in the most glorious of terms. Spoke? Do I no longer possess King Philip's favor? Philip is dead. De Guzman, you may slither back to your slime hole and wait. I am deeply sorry for your loss. Yes. Philip was an exceptional man. So of the world. So extremely wise. So extraordinarily handsome. My supreme love. One is fortunate to find a soul who matches one's own. We were married by proxy. 800 leagues apart. But yet, when Philip landed in Spain and saw me for the first time, do you know what he did? He was so infatuated. He summoned a priest to marry us again, face to face. A romantic to his core. And more. He was adored by his subjects in Burgundy, in the Netherlands, and in my Castile. He would have made a legendary emperor. And you, a magnificent empress. Our son Charles will inherit the imperial crown when Maximilian dies. Charles will also inherit Aragon when my father dies and Castile upon my passing. Philip's vision of a Habsburg Europe lives in our boy. An exciting prospect. Do you mock me? No, no. Majesty. Majesty, I too share such visions for a fused Italy. You have known kings, dukes, popes. What do you think of my father? In our brief meeting, he seemed a true son of the Aragon. He is el hijo del diablo. When my mother died and I became queen, he had coins minted with my face on one side and his on the other. Philip was irate. He had coins minted with the two of us displayed. El verdadero rey y la reina de Castile. Those coins, our coins, were more popular, as was Philip. My Castilians always hated Ferdinand, considering him unworthy to marry Isabella of the royal house of Trastamara. Majesty, forgive me. I have been locked inside this castle for ten hard months. I, I have few visitors. So I am doubly pleased that you would deign to grace me with your presence. Still, as we speak, one question haunts my head. Why have you come? Do I ramble? No, no. Majesty, I assure you, I am grateful for your memories. But I have never been a patient man. Did my father hire you to poison my husband? No. Prove that note to me. How? One cannot prove that an event did not happen. An event did happen. Philip is dead. I had no hand in that catastrophe. Swear that you speak true. I could place my palm upon the Bible, but my oath would be a paskin ad. What? Then swear on something else. I would. If I believed in something, other than myself. A dishonest man would have taken the Bible, regardless of its meaning to him, and sworn until Sunday. <laughs> I accept your word. You are not guilty of Philip's murder. Is that why you came? To read my face? Are you certain that Ferdinand murdered Philip? The doctors claim my darling died of typhoid. 
that doctors can be bribed. A crime of which my father is more than capable. Ferdinand d'Aragon has committed a succession of infamies beyond my spouse's murder. The expulsion of the Jews and Mudechah Moors. The establishment of the Inquisition. The confiscation of properties owned by Holy Mother Church. The violation of treaty after treaty. He sold my sister Katharina to that monster Henry Tudor and has since abandoned her to an unknown fate. Worst sin of all, Ferdinand was unfaithful to my mother. He has bastard children, one of whom he convinced Pope Julius to appoint as Archbishop of Saragossa. For his transgressions, Ferdinand has suffered. He has no legitimate male heir. But he still could. Cesare Borgia. I want you to kill my father. Patricide and regicide in one swift act. Death gave me this crown. The death of my mother, my brother, his daughter, my sister, her son. My destiny is to rule until Charles is of age. Ferdinand's death will secure my position in Castile and Aragon. My son's future will be unassailable. What will be my reward? Your freedom. I would expect the full force of Spain to aid me in regaining the Romagna. You will have my support. Conquer Rome, for all I care. And Naples. Several old vendettas must be settled. I want the Neapolitan scepter placed in my hand. Fine. I have no interest in Italy, except that you, Borgia, must pledge to ally yourself with my son Charles once he has the scepter of the Holy Roman Empire in his hand. I pledge so now. Then we are agreed. Yes. An everlasting agreement. Poor as wine. We three must celebrate. Three? Yes. You, me, and Philip. <laughs> yes. His spirit surrounds us. Not solely his spirit. On our voyage, from Flanders to La Coruña, we sailed through the Angles the Canal. The sky and the sea turned into a dark tempest. Our ship was wrecked against the rocks of Dorset. And still, Philip held me carrying me through the waves and debris to the safety offshore. Oh, my darling. I will never let you go. How was your audience with the Queen? I've been wondering of late if I'm going mad. But having met her, I see that I'm fully sane. Is this the fate to which I am delivered? Aligning myself with a banshee? Her grandmother struggled with the same malady. Not madness, but sadness. A, a sadness of the soul which confuses the mind. To do what I must do to gain my liberty will be dangerous enough. But... Relying on the wits of an unstable spirit? Damn! Is this fear I hear? Not fear. Caution. To act rashly is a fool's move. Still, I must play chess with the Mad Queen's rules. She is at present my only option. 
and I will make the best of it.